everybody. Thanks for tuning in today for our latest episode in the Behind the Brand series. We are here in Orange County visiting GT Bicycles Return Home to California. Let's head inside, meet some of the crew, go for a ride and learn about what the brand is up to back in their home state. Yo, Drew. What's up, Mike? How are you, man? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Lone Wolf. Come on in. All right, let's check it out. Awesome to have you here. This has been a long, long time coming, right? Yep. And how poetic, right? Back in SoCal, back to where the brand started. We got an awesome few days planned for you. We've got some special guests. Okay. And a ride and a bunch of cool stuff to check out, man. All right, man, let's get into let's it. Let's do it. Mike, so who are you and what uh, what do we do here? Drew, um, Mike Morrow, so head of marketing is my title here at GT Bicycles. Okay. It's a little bit of everything. You know, we're a small core core team out here, so it's it's um, it's important that we wear many hats. It's my 13th year with the brand. Okay. Um, I started kind of in the inception of what, uh, the former regime. Okay. And um, I've seen so much so much change and the recent change has been fantastic. So it's it's been an amazing ride so far. And let, let's talk a little bit about that change. Sure. Obviously we are in Southern California. So yeah. let's talk about what that Holy means. Holy cow. How poetic is that, right? The yeah. symbolism, right? The, the brand 50 years ago, over 50 years ago, um, we were born here in Orange County, right? Like grew to be, you know, one of the biggest brands in the universe. Um, and we've returned since the, you know, since some of the recent changes with the organization, January 1st, 2023, mm -hmm. We're based here, back in Orange County, um, back to kind of reestablish re our roots, okay. and we were really set up for the uh, set the brand's future up for a lot of success here. Obviously, where you guys are now is sort of a shared space with Cervella, yes. who's another partner brand, I guess, yep. under the umbrella, right? Yep. Yep. Um, but are there future plans to kind of step out, get your own spot, maybe a demo center, anything yeah. like that? So actually, that's a really good question and a really good point. So the, the crew at Cervella has been nothing but welcoming. It's been an amazing, it's a great kind of family atmosphere here. Um, but there are plans for GT to, um, to kind of uh, branch off and have its own standalone presence. And we know one of the things about, you know, a lot of the GT products is people want to be able to touch and feel our product. They want to know where to find them. So having a standalone presence with, like you said, a bit of a showroom, a bit of a uh, demo presence is on the roadmap for sure, for the future. Okay, so people will be able to come down here and ride some awesome Laguna and Orange County trails. Yes. Right on. Jason, how long have you been in the bike industry? A long time, since the mid 90s. I, I was lucky enough to start in, uh, I guess the late 90s with Lou Composites in Las Vegas when we were doing um, some of the first carbon carbon bike wheels um, back then and then uh, through a series of events that company was acquired and combined with the Reynolds brand okay and I did all the original Reynolds stuff um, wheels and components and whatnot and then um, left Reynolds and went and started Edge which became Envy started in my kitchen and uh, <laughs> and um, primarily focused on Crank Brothers and trying to turn Crank Brothers around. And I spent the last seven years doing that prior to this. So you've been all over the place? A bit, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well-traveled. How old were you when you first got into the bike industry? Uh, I was in my late 20s. Okay. So I had started a couple businesses outside of the bike industry and done okay with those. So I thought I was pretty clever and then I came into the bike industry and learned that it works very differently within the bike industry. Through that journey and bringing you here to where you're at at GT, um, how does this sit just in that, that ride of the bike industry? Yeah, I mean, when I got the phone call um, at the potential of coming to GT, um, it, was, it was super rad. My very first bike that I was able to, and, and I had to beg, steal, and borrow to get the money for was a GT. Bikes for me were freedom. Like, they were wings, and I would ride all day just to be gone. And, so I, I had a deep love of riding bikes. It was more, it was never really about competition. It was more about the freedom and the solace and the, you know, cleaning your mental diaper. Yeah. And um, so, you know, my, my relationship with bikes was that. And I fell in love with, you know, mountain biking and was able to get a GT. And if somebody would have came to me as a, you know, 17 year old kid and said, someday you'll have the chance to run GT, I would have freaked out. Yeah. You know? So for me, it's a, it's kind of poetic and full circle and it's brought me back to it. And I, I mean, if we're being honest, like GT is, has seen it all. Like it's been on top and it's been on bottom and the group here is super passionate. Everybody, everybody bleeds blue and yellow and um, we're all very, very 
excited about the opportunity to bring it back to prominence. Yeah, I mean, that's very apparent. Like all the people that I've met here, like you can tell they're not just working here because it's a job. Like they're like, these guys are like, they're diehard GT It's a fans. religion, yeah, it's a religion. And I, honestly, I was shocked um, to travel. For the last year, I've been traveling to different bike festivals and whatnot, and the one thing I would, I would say is an absolute truth is pretty much everybody has a GT story. Yeah. <laughs> like if you talk to them long enough, it was their first BMX bike, it was their first whatever, and everybody's happy to share their GT story. So I, I spend a lot of my time listening to people's GT stories as I travel, but it's, yeah. it's, it's a religion. There's a lot of goodwill for the brand. People are super excited at the idea of it coming back. Yeah. And it's uh, like some, unlike some of the other companies where I've worked at where you're trying to convince people to, to be passionate about it, I feel like there's a huge groundswell for GT to be successful and people are really rooting for us. So Yeah, um, I, I would agree. There's just so much history, there's so much opportunity, and getting it back here in SoCal gives us a chance to kind of attach ourselves to it mm -hmm. in a tangible way. But most importantly, we're less than two miles from the trailhead. Yeah. Which we couldn't say in Connecticut. Right, yeah. <laughs> so. So how long have you been working with GT? So I joined the uh, GT family May of this year. Okay. Um, yeah, coming from previous bike brand. For those of you who don't know, right, Steezy Geezy here is the Steez master. So uh, what what are you going to be looking to bring into the bikes that has a little bit of your personality and style to it? Well, first off, thanks for the kind words. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is definitely a great question. You know, I get asked that a lot for why I made the change to, right. to GT. I think the biggest strength for the GT product is the value that, that we sell at the price point that we sell it. We have a high performance product that we can sell at a very obtainable price point. Mm -hmm. you know, we, do, we don't sacrifice in engineering, we don't sacrifice in frame design, but we can bring that to the lower level price point, which gets out to the masses. So looking forward, you know, we're not looking to change that value focus, but in terms of bring a new modern take, breath of fresh air into the product line in terms of very strategic products and you know directions that, that we'll take. Mm -hmm. Modern color palettes, you know, new 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 form language looking forward and just an overall fresh, revived line moving forward. Awesome man. Well thank you very much for the time and I appreciate you chatting with us. And I think uh, we're gonna lead us into the next person who you work intimately with both here in the office and out on the trail, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, so we'll bring in Josh. He's uh, one of our senior engineers. He uh, did the current Forest Carbon, the current generation, as well as the new Sensor Carbon that just launched. Cool, awesome man. Well, thanks again, appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Josh, how long have you been working with GT Bikes? Uh, it's been seven and a half years now. Okay. Yeah, it's been a long time. Is it your first job in the bike industry? It is, uh, out of bike shops, of course. I was a mechanic in a bike shop for a little while, but um, right out of the bike shop, I got hired as an intern, and six months later, turned into a full-time gig. Okay, right on. And did you do any engineer studying? The minute I got into school, I started riding mountain bikes a little more seriously. Okay. I got, got my first school suspension around that time, and I knew I wanted to take engineering and bring it into bikes. Um, so, for an engineer-minded person who wants to get into the bike industry, you got to Advice in the form? Work on your bike. And work on other people's bikes too. Because okay. it's one thing to know your bike in and out, it's another thing to know everybody else's bikes in and out. I'd say one of the things that really helped me out was actually becoming a mechanic at a shop for a little while. What have been some of the projects that you've worked on since you've been at your team? Uh, so, probably the first project that I dipped my toes into was the last generation force and sensor. Um, and then I worked on this guy the new sensor, okay. uh, and the sensor SC as well, with the variants of this. And then I also worked on the new Force Carbon frame as well. So one of the things you'll notice is this bike has much smaller tubing all around. Um, the last Force and sensor was a little bit heavy and a little bit overly stiff um, for a trail bike in particular. Uh, one of the things with that frame is that it had to, uh, we used similar frame members for the enduro bike as well as the trail bike. Uh, so you ended up with a balance game there where we wanted the stiffness and durability for the enduro bike, but it didn't quite translate perfectly to the trail bike version. Uh, so this was a new approach to that where we were able to shed 600 grams off the frame weight 
and we were able to refine a, a, a better trail bike stiffness that isn't bouncing you off rocks and stuff. What would you say is like one of the most rewarding things as a bike engineer? Oh, um, seeing your bike out there. Okay. And and it's one thing to to see the prototype show up and ride it. That's that's the first best best okay. part. But th there's another joy to and satisfaction to watching other people ride your bike. Okay. Uh, and and not just somebody who, you know who you know who wants to ride your bike. But well, there's one in the wild. That's that's always been um, still a fresh experience to me, even now. Um, awesome, man. Well, thank you. I appreciate you taking time and uh, chatting with us. And I can't wait to get this bike dirty out on the trail. Yeah, let's go for a ride later. Put your work to the test. So excited. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you. Coming to work for a brand like GT, I came from the core side of the industry, worked for the sickest brands, and this was kind of my first chance to do it my way um, with support or just very hands off <laughs> support. <laughs> um, and, you know, just coming to work for such an important brand um, and the people trusting me. And I don't know how much of it was trust or just them not fully understanding BMX and trusting. You know, I, maybe my resume, what I've done in the past helped a lot. Um, but it's just every day, like getting to bring something that's so important to people back to the limelight. Um, and you know, like we're a very special brand, like a lot of people, there are some brands that do mountain bikes and have some BMX and this and that, but I don't think there's a single brand that's as important to the industry as GT was. And it's still a trip to me to say that I'm GT or I'm part of GT. You know, we've been such a small team, just head down, grinding it out. And all of us have nothing but the best intent with what we're doing because it's such an important thing to so many people. Um, and we have some of the most fanatical fans yeah. <laughs> and you don't want to let them down, yeah. you know, but also we want to stay true to ourselves and stay true to the brand and make it a perfect, not a perfect example, but at least an ideal example of what a bike company should be today. Right. And that's what's really excited about what we're doing right now. You know, there are fans, they're an extended part of our family and they should be clued in a little bit on what's going on. Let, let them have a little bit of ownership of what you're doing, you know, and I feel like that humanizes a brand, you know, like we already have a challenge of people imagine us as GT or this big corporation. It's like, dude, we're less than 20 people now, yeah. you know, for the longest time we were less than 10 people. Like we're as DIY and core a group as it gets. What's up, dude? Hey, man. How's it going? How are you? Yeah, good. What's going on? Oh, you know, just surviving from those tacos. Yeah, I know, right? A little, little well, heavy, but amazing. They were delicious. Yeah, very good. So, um, what's going on? What's your name and what do you do here? So, Ed Fardos. I'm head of global operations and digital. So, I head up basically and manage uh, all incoming supply, demand planning, and we're also um, redoing our entire website, gt.com. A lot to look forward to there. And then we're also on point for the B2B app, uh, which basically allows our dealers to order bikes and get visibility to inventory and what's coming in and whatnot. Okay. So I actually have a, I'm, I'm a little bit of a outcast when it comes to the bike business because I'm from high tech. So okay. I, I spent a decade at Apple. Wow. I launched, I launched the uh, original phone, watch and iPad. So just a few products you might've heard of. Okay. Right? Um, and so yeah, I did that for the US initially and then I went global and did the watch and iPad globally. And now you're working on mountain bikes. And do, I love bikes. <laughs> what can you say? And Jason and I go back. I met him when he was just a young guy. Okay. Uh, we were, we, he was on an avalanche and inspired me to get a Karakoram. So I got my Karakoram and we started hitting the trails together. Okay. I was 20. He was like 17. Wow. So, yeah. So it was the OG days. Right on. Yeah. And so, I mean, throughout your years of having a, another job, you were always an avid cyclist and then... Cyclist and he and I always stayed in contact. Okay. So I, he went bike path and did amazing things, and I went tech and uh, you know joined Apple and did some pretty killer stuff there. Yeah, and when the opportunity to to help GT you know come kind of stand up on its own two feet, I just there's no way I was going to pass it up. That's really cool, man. Yeah. Right on. So yeah. how long have you been working here? So I will celebrate my one year in August. Wow. So first thing we did was uh, we moved the headquarters, as yeah. you well know. Right here we are in Aliso Viejo. So. I worked remote for the first three or four months, okay. disentangling uh, the site, the office, yeah. 
uh, getting it packed up and shipped out here to Aliso and then firing this building up. Wow, right on, man. Yeah. Well, and what do you think of the transition? Bike industry versus tech? You know what? Similarities, differences? Yes and yes. You know, <laughs> what's cool is the stoke is real, yeah. right? So that part is super legit. Yeah. Um, and it's hard not to just be passionate about, you know, bringing cool bikes to the market. I mean, tech was fantastic, make no mistake, right? right. Life changing, but there's a freedom that you get on two wheels. For sure, yeah. absolutely. My current role is administrative manager, head of staff, um, but I used to be a graphic design manager here. And longest standing employee here? Um, yeah, I guess I would be. Um, I started um, in 2001 is when Mongoose had, and, uh, had been acquiring Schwinn and GT. Okay. And so I've been working with GT solely since about 2007. What has your time with the company at Changing Hands been like? When we first got GT, we were all excited to have this cool mountain bike brand and BMX brand, even though we were, you know, mongoose and stuff. But having having that um, come into into play and into the brand, into the brand house, um, that was exciting because we always knew GT was like a little bit cooler and had that rock and roll vibe and everything like that and they're so cal and like have that um it just it was exciting yeah it was exciting and then you know seeing it ebb and flow in the in the years after as far as like getting the different racers and riders and even in the markets it's been it's been a fun ride so 2001 like, let's talk with some of the pro athletes that you've worked with since then, because there have been some pretty notable achievements and wins in that period, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so actually, one of my first bikes was, um, I worked on the Carbon Fury, the Athertons, working with them. I got, got to work with some of the BMX riders as far as Olympic bikes. So that's uh, been pretty fun. Yeah, very cool. And then moving into today, right, mm -hmm. you're now not back east you're here in california yeah. brand seen a breath of fresh life it feels like oh my gosh yes what what does that mean for you like especially for someone who's been here so long knowing that all the different transitions that uh gt has gone through and being going from different places and and being acquired by different companies when Pond came in and uh, Joe came in and, and they all interviewed us and talked to us and said, hey, we want to make GT, you know, back to where it was, back cool, back in, in the States, bringing it back to the U.S. because uh, we had, you know, not so much brought in. Um, it, was a, it was a breath of fresh air for sure. Uh, feeling that they're wanted, they're going to put time and effort into the brand again. Mm -hmm. Um, it was reassuring and actually there's them spending time with us and talking to us and figuring out what the brand wants because we all want GT to succeed. Right. We are all very passionate about it. Um, and so when, even when Jason came on board and to find out, you know, his past and what he do has done and what he's doing with the team and the people that he, he knows from his past mm -hmm. and bringing it in, it's, it's been, it's been a cool ride. Yeah. Yeah, very excited cool. for the future. You guys got any questions for him? Hi. Right. Rapid fire. What hair product do you use? Yeah, what hair product do you use? That's a question I get all the time, surprisingly. <laughs> well, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, sweat. Natural, pure, athletic sweat. Done half mixed, a run. Mixed with a little bit of olive oil, maybe? Yeah. What are some of the biggest challenges for someone in your position? I think it's understanding not only bikes, but the market, right? You know, certain places have a lot of different needs in terms of what riders want to ride. Um, you know, whether it's shorter travel bikes, longer travel bikes, cross country bikes, and obviously e bikes. Um, so, you know, we're kind of doing what we can, working with our sales guys, and, you know, really kind of trying to get as much knowledge and learning and that's kind of the fun bit is you get to learn so much about so many cool places and you know perks of working in the bike industry is you know we get to ride our bike a lot and i know you had mentioned earlier that you were living in bellingham now moved down here yep. so um if you were specking a bike for bellingham versus specking a bike for riding right here tire is going to change right there's a lot of stuff that changes so um 
how do you kind of put a, a value or a weight on spec choices for budget and for riders and different regions? Is that is that a struggle? It is. It's a great question. Um, ultimately, you know, it's kind of the beauty of my job is I work with a lot of great riders, whether, you know, our in-house team, uh, our factory racers, you know, riders and athletes all over the world. It's really fun to kind of, you know, say, hey, I need someone to ride this, you know, whether it's up in Bellingham, BC, or back, you know, on the East Coast or Europe, et cetera. Like, you know, we can test tires, suspension, brakes, and ultimately it's about, you know, striking that right balance of, you know, bike performance and value. Really, you know, want to make sure that when a rider throws a leg over a GT, they're gonna have a kick-ass experience. They're gonna, you know, be kind of frothing for the next ride and really just kind of love the process of it all. So let's talk about the new bike. Okay. What were goals, what were you shooting for? Uh, what were challenges or really exciting moments for you in the development? For sure. We really liked how the previous bike suspension performed our LTS. It, it won a World Cup, right? Um, so we didn't want to change too much, but there were a few tweaks we wanted to make. We did add another rate of progression. We increased the progression for the leverage ratio because the bike is now faster. And we wanted it to be able to take bigger hits as it will be seen. And so I think this is a good example of how you can make the bike work better for a racer, um, better for a mechanic, or if you are your own mechanic, um, every little touch point is just easy, simple, practical, and it looks like a race bike too. We're pretty excited about that. So for people who haven't ridden a GT or wouldn't have considered a GT down the bike, maybe rode one many years ago, Yeah. what would be your little sound bite for those people when looking at this bike? Okay, so it looks cool. <laughs> it's easy to work on. It has all of the adjustments. And what I mean by that is, if you have a certain riding quirk that makes you want a short chain stay or a long chain stay or high progression leverage ratio or you want to run a mullet this bike can do all of it and it's with the flip of a chip uh, so it's it's really easy to set up for not only going fast or for a certain track but it's easy to set up for you right on well i can't wait to ride one yeah right on well thanks it was good to meet you and uh fun getting out here on the trails with you congrats and uh yeah can't wait to get one of these for ourselves to try out thank so. you true thank you Get back to riding. I think so. Right, <laughs> it's a good one, you're on film. I <laughs> said, it's a good one, you're on film. coming to visit GT everybody. Remember there's always enough time for good times. Till next time, see you on the trail. Thanks. <laughs> All right.